Good morning. How are you, Glenn? I'm very good, thank you, Florence. Excellent. So, thank you very much for your time. No so, we hi, hello. Today how are you? Well, how are you? Um, right, thank you. Some of your views on, on, this is my um, spot. Why did you become a, a university um, teacher? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, well, I've got a long sort of history because um, I wasn't always a university. Yes. Teacher, and I think. The biggest so where are we exactly? This is my office. Was I trained Welcome. many years ago to be a classroom <laughs> teacher. So, so I worked um, in state schools for I'm here nine this years morning and um, um, did a lot of travelling around the night. Um, um, always wanted to become a teacher in the first place, even as a child. Yeah, sure. so I'm Tanya. Sometimes um, you get inspired I'm by a teacher, in at least one person in your life when you're at school. And I had a really inspired, inspirational teacher um, in year three, believe it or not. And um, he said to me, you know, why don't you think about teaching a, 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 as a profession? And I took it up. And, um, I was lucky to go through in those days to become a teacher. And basically, after nine years of classroom teaching, which so I thoroughly enjoyed, what it means to I thought I might go on and basically do a degree. So. Uh, a further degree, because so nowadays, um, when I was doing it, was only diplomas. Um, you got a diploma of education. That's a good question. So the, I, I went on to do a bachelor of education, out, and I got kind of involved in other areas, as you do when you do masters and bachelors and stay on a bit longer. And I went on and became a tutor for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander education program, and was training Indigenous students to be teachers. And that was really interesting, because I was doing my PhD at the same time, which was around education, sociology, of education and, and I, I sort of became one of the founding members of the at at the first Aboriginal um, and education so what are facility some of the, um, for challenges uh, tax you students, have tertiary um, education um, students and, and, and worked in that program mm, uh, I think for the five or six years. So I helped set that centre up, which is now, now has a different so name at the university, well, but that was so the original centre at the James Cook. And then I sort of became very interested in areas of other areas. I think pushing yourself out of boundaries, I had interest in sociology, so I transferred over to sociology. Into this routine, department or college, really what, what we call it now, had an interest in sociology and then had also had an interest in criminology, sure helped set that program up. So I think it's been an evolving process as well as through opportunities and I think as a teacher, uh, as a university teacher, you've got to keep challenging yourself and saying, What's um, next? And you then don't as want to well, I think old and stale. Making uh, time become old, to sure. But <laughs> you don't want to become, to become stale uh, yeah. while, yeah. while you're doing it. So I, I, I think becoming a university teacher, you've, you've got to remain vibrant. Doing, but you've got to, you've got to remain interested. And particularly interested in the job, the subject matter, and above all, the students. Thank you for that. So, what are some of the challenges that you've encountered and had to overcome? Oh, many challenges. I think some of the challenges are around changes to what's expected of you from the university. It's I think one of the challenges for me, being a little older, has been around technology um, and embracing and learn about uh, things like online content. We all had to jump under online is that there are um, a year ago through the COVID. The teacher, that was a major challenge. Friend, um, so working with technology has been one of the major challenges. But I've had a lot of help from people like you and other people to get over the line and become and a little so bit better. For any um, teacher, those I think it's easier for younger people to probably do that. I think sometimes the other challenges are around ensuring that your content is always up to date, to mm -hmm. um, it and, becomes dated very quickly, that um, you can't rest teacher, on your laurels, you um, it's good to revamp lectures and to put new to content in them, there's new things around, them for example, I teach in the idea, the area of youth identity so and that culture, might take that's an evolving kind of topic, so, so staying on top of that in terms of what the knowledge is, what the trends are, what's in the news, Mm -hmm. um, and becoming Anything across the like chart, um, what's in popular culture, which is a huge academic, changing area. I love being a teacher, mm -hmm. um, educator. It's been a really Every important day one I as well. Work with young and sometimes uh, and the other challenge is around um, engaging students. So I'm so I think that's a so big challenge these day. days since COVID <laughs> when we went online. And kind of we didn't have the face to face contact. So really and I think that was a really big one, trying to engage Thank people so much, to come You're online, for us. Nice to become involved in Blackboard sessions and discussion sessions. Yeah. and to keep people interested. I think that's been the biggest thing. I don't have that problem really in face-to-face -face lectures. Um, mm. I'm, I'm pretty good with engaging people, I think, and keeping people interested. But doing it online was particularly a big challenge for me, mm. and I think for the students. God, they, people sometimes drew back and didn't come, and basically it was, it was harder to gauge where people were coming from. So you do lose some people along the way, which is unfortunate. Mm, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that. And so, what advice would you give to your um, younger self when it comes to teaching and, and learning? I think remaining vibrant um, and remaining enthusiastic. I mean, no one wants someone up the front who's boring. I mean, I hate boring. You know, <laughs> um, when I see something boring, I turn it off, and I'm sure students turn it off too. I've been a student, and I know what a boring lecture is like. So, 
remaining engaging, um, having a big sense of humour, um, and being flexible with people. I mean, people have things happen in their lives, and your students do, and they're real life events, and um, being flexible and uh, having some humility as a person, and above all, being interested in people's lives, and, and, and making that connection with people is just so important. Um, because if you lose that connection, you lose students, mm -hmm. and you lose the interest, and you lose the impact. What you want to do is to walk in there like a show, and I treat every performance, uh, every lecture as a performance, mm -hmm. and people want to come to your show. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do this week? It's going to keep people interested. Is it a joke? Is it is it around something that's really topical that people are going to get into? And so, you know, how do you keep people interested? And um, mm -hmm. if you do that um, and work at that act uh, or performance, there's a performative aspect to all this, um, you engage people and people do better because they come, they want to come, and um, it's nothing better than, I mean, I ran into a, just a story, I ran into a, I was ready to go into a yoga class the other day, and um, and this lady was going to introduce me to this, to this lady behind me, she said, oh, do you know Glenn? She said, of course I know him, I didn't know the lady, um, I taught her <laughs> ten years ago, she said, you're my best lecturer, and I still talk about people ten years ago, she's been working out for ten years, yeah. about your first year sociology classes. Yeah. So running into people constantly, like I have for thirty years, who I don't know, and I'm sorry I don't know them, um, but um, people know me, yes. and we often have conversations, and they say to their children, this is my, this is my son Tom, you know, this is Mr Dawes, you know, and um, yeah. all parts of, of the world, or all parts of certainly this town, mm -hmm. where people don't forget, and they don't forget the good experience, and that's what inspired me in the first case. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much, Professor Dawes, that was fantastic. Thank no you. Problem. Thank you, Florence. All right, that was great. Is that okay? Perfect. <laughs> I guess everybody's got different stories. Do I turn this up?